Hi everyone, welcome back to Tech Booth. Today we are talking about high speed sync. For you to be able to understand high speed sync, we need to go back to some basics of how the camera shutter works. The shutter consists of two barriers that open up to allow light to hit your sensor and take the picture. Most cameras that you're going to come across use what is called a focal plane shutter. And this consists of two barriers that close the sensor off. And when you press the shutter to take a picture, those two barriers open up, allow light to hit the sensor, and that takes the picture, and then they close up again. The barriers that make up the shutter are called curtains. One is called the first curtain, and the second one is called the second curtain or they're also called the rear curtain or the front curtain. When you take a picture, the first curtain comes down to expose the sensor to light. And when the shutter duration that you have set is done, the second curtain comes down and closes the shutter. The duration when the sensor is fully open is called your shutter speed. That duration gets shorter and shorter as you increase your shutter speed until you get to a point where the second shutter starts to come down to close off the sensor before the first shutter is completely out of the way. That maximum shutter speed is called the flash sync speed. The maximum speed where the sensor can be fully open and fully illuminated by the single flash of a speed light without any of the curtains being in the way. Beyond that, the second curtain starts to come down and starts to block part of the sensor and that affects the exposure for that part of the sensor. So let's connect this TT600 to this camera and then take a few photos and see what happens as we increase the shutter speed using the flash to take a picture. So now that I've got my flash connected, let's see what happens when I start taking pictures. We'll start at 1 over 80th of a second. Take our picture and it looks okay. We keep going up. Let's go up to 1 over 250th of a second and take the same picture and still looks fine. Let's see if we can exceed one. Let's go up to 500th of a second and take the same picture. And you see the problem that we start getting. Right at the bottom there, you start seeing a bar. Keep going up to, let's say, 800. And the dark area is even increasing. And we'll go all the way to 160 hundredth of a second and we can hardly see anything and whatever is happening here is what high speed sync tries to solve to achieve high speed sync you need a high speed sync capable speed light like this Godox TT 600 when you put your flash in high speed sync mode what happens is instead of it going off just once when you take the picture it gives off bursts of light at microsecond intervals as the shutter opens and closes. Now remember, for you to be able to use this speed light directly on your camera in high speed sync mode, it must be compatible with your camera. In this case, I have a Godox TT600. Even though it is high speed sync capable, I cannot use it to do that on top of this camera. It will work for anything else, just a simple flashing, but in high speed sync mode it does not work because it is a universal flash which only has one pin to communicate um, when the shutter is pressed so that it goes off. It cannot communicate other information even though it's high speed sync capable. So for me to be able to use this in high speed sync mode, I need to use a trigger on top of the camera because this trigger is compatible with this particular camera so depending on what camera you're using you need to see that it is compatible so let's set this up we need to connect our trigger to our camera making sure you do it while it's off so that you don't cause any shorting 
and then we need to set this to communicate with the trigger turn my camera on and turn my flash trigger on and what we now need to do is go into this flash trigger and set it to high speed sync go to menu it goes to sync so now it's in sync I go to set and I have three options there and what we want to do is go to high speed sync so let's go back to my flash and what we need to do here is make sure we change this from manual by pressing this uh, button until that starts flashing if you want to see how to operate this in more detail i have a video i can put the link in the description that shows you how to operate the godox tt600 but once it starts flashing i can now change it to slave mode and what slave mode means is uh, it's controlled by this trigger right now it's on channel one my trigger is on channel three so i need to change the channel to three so that they communicate now it also shows that it's in high speed sync let's take a picture and see what that looks like and you can see no bar and yet it's on uh, if you look on my settings there the shutter speed is 1600 so that's that's the problem high speed sync tries to solve so that you can shoot at very high shutter speeds. Now, once you have the X2T trigger, you don't have to set high speed sync on the flash unit itself. It's controlled by your trigger. So even if I switch this off, and as long as this is in high speed sync mode, it comes back on because it's been controlled by the trigger so when would you use this high speed sync mode what is it used for one scenario where high speed sync mode would be very useful is when you are shooting out in very bright conditions like uh, during midday very bright sun or you're shooting even with the sun um, behind your subject in that scenario you want to make sure that your background is not uh, overexposed and your foreground is well exposed so you're trying to balance the background which is very bright with your foreground so that the two uh, both have good exposure some call it uh, overpowering the sun when you're taking portraits of people you would normally also need to have your aperture as wide as possible that means opening up your your aperture as wide as possible and then setting it so that you get a blurry background. Open apertures usually result in nice blurry background and your subject stands out. So the combination of a very bright day and an open aperture means the only way you can control your exposure now is using your shutter speed. And if it's bright enough, you are going to have to exceed that maximum limit of one over 250th of a second and so you're entering into high speed sync territory. So in this case, you go into this three step process. Step number one, you set your ISO to low. Step number two, you set your aperture to what you want it to be. And then step number three, you crank up your shutter speed to get the exposure for the background that you want without having the flash going off. Once you get a good exposure for the background, you then switch your flash on and now you work on the exposure of the foreground using the flash power. Once you've done that, you'll be able to get an image that is well balanced, both the background and the foreground in terms of exposure. You can get a very dramatic look to your image depending on how you manage the background and the foreground exposures. So that is it, high speed sync. It's there for you to be able to manage exposure when you're shooting in very bright conditions and you still want to use a flash and you're going beyond 
the flash sync speed. That's it for today. I'll see you next time on Tech Boom.